Welcome to today's webinar, the latest installment in Anthill Magazine's Undie Empire webinar series sponsored by Citrix GoToMeeting. Today the focus of our webinar will be on content marketing, or more specifically, how to create a maelstrom of marketing opportunities in your underpants. My name is James Tuckerman and I will be your moderator today. But before we get started, while the latecomers continue to shuffle into the virtual back rows, I'd like to show you how you can interact with us today. At the side of your screen, you will see a questions box. We'll be having a Q&A at the end, but we'll also be inviting participation and interaction throughout today's webinar. So let's test this out of the 730 odd registrations uh, for today's webinar, we uh, have 150, gee, it, it's flying up, people logging on. So while people continue to log on, I would like you to test out this box. I would like you to share with me the topic of an ebook, a webinar, a fact sheet, a blog, in fact, any item of online content that really grabbed your attention in the not too distant past. So can you just shout it out using that box, something that you read somewhere, the topic of something, maybe it's an ebook, maybe it's a blog, just the topic, what it's about, something that made you go, ooh, or even better, perhaps something that you uh, even shared with somebody else. So let's see who wants to get started. Seth Godin's blog, thank you, Aidan Gibson Hughes. Uh, by the way, welcome John Daffy from uh, from where did you say you were from? Oh, now they're coming in so fast I can barely catch up. It's coming in from Wellington in Bris Vegas. Here we go. Um, what to look for in order to trust an online store. Thank you, Michael Morgano. Why parents hate parenting. New York Times, Katie Shaw. Styling your blog. Janine Su. Uh, Gary, Gary Venichuk. Now, why do I know that name, Mr. Carl Stoltz? Why do I know that name? That's very, must be his blog. How to use LinkedIn to empower seven common sales scenarios. Marlon Nielsen, wow, they're really coming thick and fast now. Uh, are there is, someone wants to know where is my parents hate parenting. Thank you, uh, Carola LaVincia. Whoever said that before, Katie Shaw, tell us where you found that. Um, my brand, MII brand, love this app. Jade from Retail First, thank you, Jade Yates. Man, they are many, 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 many different ones coming in there, wow. Put your marketing pipeline on autopilot Martin Stead. Well, that's a, a lot of a lot of different topics from parenting to LinkedIn. Um, some of those topics I found slightly surprising, but what did not surprise me here is the diversity of topics. I've heard it said, actually, I've heard it complained that the internet is becoming cluttered with far too much content. Now, I personally disagree. What I tend to find is that the internet is becoming a far richer source of content of specific interest to me. And why is that? Well, I don't think it's because the big brands are adding more information to their websites. I think it's because like-minded people with a passion and a commercial vested interest in becoming an authority in their space are getting better at creating smarter, savvier, more targeted content. Now, this is something that today's guest speaker understand, understands inside out and back to front. In fact, not so long ago, in June 2012, so we're early in August, it was just yesterday, today's guest was named by Forbes magazine in its worldwide list of the top 10 social media influences in book publishing. In fact, he came in at number five. He's an entrepreneur, business consultant, speaker, mentor, mentor and interviewer. He has 10 books to his name, a swag of e-books and a series of audio programs. Of course, I'm talking about Guillaume Pereira. He joins us today. I use the word swag deliberately because Guillaume Pereira hails from, uh, he's an Australian. He's joining us from Perth, so he knows that word swag. Welcome, Guillaume. How are you doing, mate? <laughs> I'm very well, James. Thank you so much for that introduction. So, look, one of the things I love, I love that question that you asked because uh, one of the things that I noticed is people, as you were reading out what people are contributing in terms of great content, I love the titles and part of what I want to talk today about is compelling content. So do you want me to get going, James? Yeah, sure. Going? One we... thing I do want to ask is our audience, how's our audio sound? I feel like I'm a little bit louder than Gain. How do we feel about that, everyone? Just give us a, 
Great. Thank you, Kimberly Overton. Fine, fine by Megan Barra, Katie Johnston, Michael Ents. That's a lot. That's a lot of fines and okays. I don't think we're having any problems at all, Dan. <laughs> so why don't you just kick things off? Good. Let's jump right into it. And I, and I love your title, James, that, uh, you, that you've promoted this as how to turn just one idea into a maelstrom of marketing opportunities in your, in your underpants. It's the first time I've presented a webinar in my underpants. So, uh, <laughs> well, I, hope, I hope you're always wearing underpants, Gan, apart from when you're in that... <laughs> Private time. That's anyway, right. That's right. I so we'll have a little. We'll have a little bit of fun <laughs> as we go along. But I love this idea of the maelstrom of marketing opportunities because I really think that's what it's about. It's not just about creating one piece of content and assuming that that's going to work for you forever, forever and a day. It's about being consistent. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges that we have is that it's difficult to find the time. Uh, and sometimes it's difficult to find the ideas, but I want to show you today a system for being able to do that so that it makes it much easier for us who are in business not to become internet, not because we want to be internet marketers, but because we want um, marketing as part of our business. So that's really what I want to talk about today. And if you think about what to expect today, so we can talk about a lot of stuff around content marketing. We can talk about why is it important, what is it, and how to. And today I really want to make it about how to. And if you're interested in why content marketing is so, so important and what it's all about, uh, Daniel Priestley, who was a guest on this Andy webinar series a few months ago, did a fantastic webinar. I'm sure some of you would have been on that uh, earlier, a couple of months ago. When was it? Uh, June? Gee, was it yeah, it would have, it would have also June, been in June, just while you were reading your name yeah. in print. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and I know that if you go to the Antil website, you can watch the recording of that webinar. And Daniel does a great job of positioning content marketing as why it's important and also what it's all about. But today, I really want to make this about how to do it, how to do it in a practical sense. Yeah, I think that our, so our also readers to... probably do now have a reasonable understanding of why content marketing is good, but uh, but but the how will be will be very valuable, I think. Yeah, great. And I did want to dovetail this with Daniel's with Daniel's webinar, so you can actually watch both and get the value from both of them. And if you haven't heard of it, we'll make it available in our notes. Oh yeah, great, great. Thank, thanks for pointing that out, James. So, and I do want to have some fun today as well, um, and we'll do some fun interactive stuff. But I do, uh, I do want to make the point that even though some of the stuff that we do will be fun, it has a serious background to it and a serious point to it as well. So let's have some serious fun today. <laughs> uh, broadly. What I want to do is go through four things. So I'll very briefly tell you why content marketing is valuable now. And as I said, Daniel's already covered that mostly. But I want to give you one, one brief uh, insight into that, and particularly how Google now treats content. And then I want to show you a system. So get great ideas, write compelling content, or create compelling content, and then spin it into multiple formats, into different formats. So James, I know you asked people earlier what some what some great content that they've seen? I wonder whether we can get some idea of what content the people who are here are already doing at the moment. So, what are you doing already? Are you blogging? Are you running webinars? Are you writing eBooks? Are you publishing videos to YouTube? Can you just type in the question box, and James, if you can help out here? Just yeah, sure. Some of the that so, are if anyone, if you, in, you or someone in your organisation is the author of a piece of content marketing that you think is pretty awesome, just use the box and tell us what it is. I think uh, Anna de Carvalho jumped ahead of us but, uh, before. I think she guessed what we were going to do. She started a blog just three months ago on sustainable fashion, and sustainable fashion textiles. Um, Felicity Gray, you've said eBooks. What What are some of the topics of the eBooks that you're looking at? Aidan Gibson is, is monthly blog YouTube videos. Uh, Martin Stead blogs articles. What are some of the topics? Would someone like to give us a headline of something that they're working on? Let's have a look here. Lots of people doing YouTube stuff, which is exciting. DIY PR. Thank you, Felicity Gray. The Hot Chips of Change. Kerry Grace. I don't know what that's about, but it sounds compelling. Seven Secrets of a Great Tea eBook. Selena Hainzel. A lot of uh, a lot of variety here. A guest Great. blogging eBook. Great. Someone's even doing one on content generation. <laughs> Glad to have you, Alyssa. <laughs> There's a whole hey, bunch cool. there. That's great. Mm. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And again, you've already mentioned this, James, but the diversity is what's really interesting and also the compelling titles. So for people who are thinking, I'd love to have compelling titles like that, just hold on for another five or ten minutes and we'll, we'll talk about how to, how to get to that point before you actually create the content around it.
Um, we've got a poll as well. So, and this applies to everyone. So even the people who are creating content, what's stopping you at the moment from creating content? What's getting in the way of you creating content? Uh, and so James, I can't see the poll results, so just tick a box. Yeah, so you might have to manage this bit, ladies and gentlemen. Just tick a box. I don't know why content marketing is important. I don't know what content to create. I don't know how to create the content. I don't have time, money, etc. We should have had one more that said, "What the hell is content marketing?" <laughs> <laughs> the other for the people yes, who thought that they were here for another reason. Uh, James knew how are we going with that poll. Do we want to hit the answers? Oh, I can see them. I can see them building up. Look at this. 49% is number two. I don't know what content to create. That's 49%, almost half. And 37% say I don't have the time or the money. That's it. This is exciting feedback again, because hopefully this is exactly what you're going to resolve today. Yeah, so what was the 49% again? That was, uh, I don't, I don't know, know what content, what content to create. To create. And the other one is, I don't have time or money. They were the two big ones. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, because we will cover both of them. Great. Yeah. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So James, if you could close the poll, please, and we'll continue. Uh, so let's get into, and this is, uh, I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on this, but we'll talk about why now and what's, what's changed in terms of our content marketing. And I first started using the internet in 1987. So this is when I was a student at the University of Western Australia a long time ago, and a year after that I graduated. So oh, you were no, so handsome. No nasty comments about how I used to look. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is in my in my in my days when I was a computer science honors student, and this was like this was literally a quarter of a century ago now, and content marketing and the internet has changed in that time. I mean, just if I can give you a very, very broad brush approach of what's changed, if you think about the, the intersection of content and marketing, in 1987, the internet was all about content. In fact, the, the, the commercial world hadn't even discovered the internet at that time. It was universities and professional organizations like that. It was all about content and nothing to do with marketing. And then the World Wide Web came along and then suddenly everything switched. It stopped being about content, but it was all about marketing. And some people here will remember the days when there were websites. But to, to build a website, you either had to have technical skills, you had to be a techie, or you had to have money to pay somebody mm. uh, who had the technical skills. And then all the change about 10 years later, when what became known as Web 2.0, or now social media, came around because suddenly everyone could create content. And that's when content marketing really took off because everyone was creating content and people were searching the web, they were actually searching for high quality content. Now there were even before, but previously it was only in the hands of a few people and now everyone can do it. And someone uh, has just asked, an example, someone's just asked can, can we answer the very simple question of what content marketing is? And I guess the simple answer, it's, it, it, it's creating valuable information for your target market, perhaps educating them, uh, Perhaps it's sharing other people's content, maybe it's blogging, maybe it's doing something else. But the one thing it, it's not doing is overtly selling. Would you say that's a reasonably apt description? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think you used the right word there, James, is educating. So it's providing valuable information that positions you as an authority, as, as the go-to guy, the go-to gal, as opposed to advertising. That's right. So you can you can advertise, but you advertise at the end of delivering content because people are looking nowadays, they're looking for they're looking for information on the internet. So generally when people search Google, they're not they're not looking to buy stuff, they're looking to find out such stuff. So it's like going to a library rather than going to a bookshop. Mm. Imagine going so to a library and someone tries to sell you something. It's not going to work. Yeah. But if exactly. you see something in a book that makes you contact that author, well that's a different story, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely, and that's exactly the, the whole principle behind content marketing. Okay, so let me, just, let me just give you one quick example of how, how things have changed uh, in the last 10 years. And so in 2002, if you want to be on the number one Google page for the phrase, make more money, it was really easy. In fact, right down here at number eight is my website company, First Step Communications, make more money from your website. And really, that was the first place on Google. So that was my website. If you search Google in 2002 for make more money, I would be on the first page. Um, and it's because I would do things like, um, it, and there was nothing that I was doing that was black hat or untoward. It was just using the right, that phrase in the title, 
I used it a couple of times in the wording of the page and that's all you had to do. So you had to do search engine optimization and that was the only thing that you needed to do at that time. So search engine optimization or SEO is still important but what Google wants now, so if you compare that with 10 years later, it used to be about what you did in meta tags and keyword density and anchor text and those sort of things still matter but now Google's got a lot smarter and is, they're looking for compelling content from a trusted authority and presented well. Okay, so Google has actually changed what it's looking for and what it wants in terms of, uh, in terms of what you have to do to create content, to create great content. Mm. Um, in fact, last year they did something which is really unusual. They released some of their guidelines to websites about how to do, uh, how to create great content. And I'm not going to, if you Google, if you go to Google and do a Google search for Google 23 guidelines for webmasters. You'll see them all here, but I just want to show you a few of them and I'll just show you, highlight the sort of things they're looking for. So they're looking for substantial value, original content, comprehensive description of the topics, insightful analysis, um, and then so on. But they're all about compelling content presented by an authority. Okay, and I know that search engine optimization is still important. In fact, James, do you want to talk about something that, um, you know, I, oh. I think you should jump in and talk about some of the SEO stuff here. Yeah, yeah, gratuitous plug alert. Uh, the 21st and the 28th of September, Ant Hill Magazine is holding an event called Conquer the Web in Brisbane on the 21st of September and in Sydney on the 28th of September. And it's a full day event and we're covering four topics, measurable, findable, shareable, manageable. That second one, findable, is a, is a fairly casual way of saying search engine optimization. So we obviously can't go into a whole lot on search engine optimization right here, right now, but that will be uh, one of four topics that we'll be running through this full day event between 9 and 4 on Friday the 21st in Brisbane or Friday the 28th in Sydney. But don't worry about that now. We'll, uh, I'll add a link to that and maybe a little discount coupon code so our listeners today, if they want a ticket, get a cheap cheap ticket. But uh, I thought it was worthwhile mentioning because it is 25% of the day is focusing on this and a big theme throughout the day is content marketing because that's often one of the things that you need to get a handle on now if you intend to conquer the web. Gratuitous plug over. Thank you, Gayan. Moving on. No, they're great. And that's, that's really valuable because uh, the most common question I get when I start talking about why it's important to do content is how does this affect SEO? Mm -hmm. And it does, but it's not the only thing anymore. So as I said, what Google really wants now is that you do have compelling content uh, and you are a trusted authority and you present it well. So that's really what I want to talk about today. And if you look at, okay, so let's look at the master plan for this, for how to create compelling content. So take, take some great ideas, create some content out of them, and then spin it or leverage it into different formats. Um, so that's really what I want to go through now. And we'll actually, as I said, James, let's make this as practical as possible and as interactive as possible. What's really so good we'll is that 49% we'll that they were struggling with what to do, and 37% said they don't have yes. the time or the money. That is exactly what you've just suggested that you'll answer, so rock and roll. Exactly, and in fact, based, based on that, we'll spend a little bit more time on uh, the what to do is like, the, like actually creating the compelling content, um, and the formats is actually how to do it, how to do it quickly, so we'll, we'll spend a bit of time on that, how to, how to do it without having to spend a whole heap of time uh, on creating every new piece of content. Great. Okay, so let's start with this whole idea of creating great ideas. And the, the first thing, as I said, and this is what Google wants as well, is that you've got to be an authority. So you've got to be an authority on solving your customers' problems. Uh, actually, James, why don't we now, um, I'm going to bring you in here. So I hope you weren't planning to just be a passive observer here. <laughs> but I don't think you ever are, are you? <laughs> so let's, uh, let's, let's, pick a, let's pick a couple of potential businesses. Uh, that okay, we'll someone who's listening today, there's another chance to knock out what it is that you what it is that you do. What industry are you in? What's your business? So, uh, if you'd like to be our guinea pig today, i.e., free assistance, we've got life insurance, recruitment, and tourism. Gee, there's a lot coming through, but they were two of the three, and they're and they're fa fairly good, aren't they? Life insurance, yes. Yeah, so tourism, insurance, what recruitment. Was the other one? It just moves so fast now. Recruitment. Recruitment. Thank you. Recruitment. 
Okay, so let's let's use them as the samples. And obviously, the people who, who typed in those, we we can't do the exact thing for your business. We're going to make up some of the stuff as we go, but that's okay. That's fine. So the first thing, as I said, is you've got to be an authority. So you've got to be an expert because people are nowadays they're looking for experts. Uh, so how do you take that material? So if you're in, sorry, how do you take the business? So if you're in life insurance, recruitment, or tourism, and we'll use those along the way, James, as examples. How do you take that and create some content around that? Um, and this is the really important part. So this is actually doing some stuff which is going to create compelling content, and then I'll show you then how to how to convert it into multiple formats. So let's go. Um, let's go I'm get some content. And and Wallace has said, ahead, "What James. about the producers of products? We should have a product in here somewhere. Can I do that? Someone's got online jewelry. Oh, yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Janine Sue, online jewelry. That's a, a product. Thank you, Anne, for picking that up. Yep, great. And that that is useful. Um, and as it turns out, because we're creating content around what we are offering, it in some ways it doesn't matter whether you're selling a product or you're selling a service, because the techniques that we'll be talking about here apply to both. And they they apply equally to both. Um, so James, I want to come back to something that the, that the great question that you asked earlier, both questions actually that you asked for input, was what are some what are some great compelling content that you've seen and some compelling content that you're creating. And from what you read out, some of those titles were really, really, they were compelling just by the title alone. So that's the way you start. So start with a compelling title for your content. And one of the best oh, places wow. to get titles, <laughs> titles for your content, <laughs> this is the genius issue, James. You should have yeah. known that. Oh, yeah. I think I was on the month before. Which was the ultra genius yes, issue. That's right. mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, so look, if you look at magazines, uh, and sometimes the, trashy, the trashiest magazines are the best, the people who get paid to write the headlines for the covers are some of the best paid people in the magazine because they're the ones who have to compel people to pick up the magazine at the checkout counter or pick up the magazine at a newsagent. Okay, so that one of the best places you can go to get your titles for compelling content is to go to magazine covers. So let's do that. Uh, fact, let's do this live. Yeah, great. So I'm just going to switch over to switch over to my web browser, and again, I'll ask you to to help me out here, James. So the the nice thing is you don't even have to buy the magazines. <laughs> uh, you can if you want to, and I'm not going to make any comments about once, whether once you choose to. Once upon a time, that would have sounded if like blasphemy to me. But uh, <laughs> now I don't sell a magazine. <laughs> print no, that's, at least. that's right. Say that's that. right. So can you scroll down saying. so we yeah. can have a look at some of these? Good point. Yeah, so let, let's look at some of these. So this is magazines.com, by the way, for, and this is really useful. So even though this is going to be a bit of fun, it's also some of the stuff that uh, that we're going to make, make use of. So change about this runner's one? Well, let's you choose, actually. Yeah, this runner's, this runner's, okay, good, runner's this one. There's lots of headlines on that. That's exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. So you're looking for the headlines. Uh, and I, I'm going to rec make a recommendation. Don't pick something in your topic area. The idea is not that you're going to try and uh, take the exact same uh, headline. What you're going to do is take the headline format and use that. It's actually easier to do if you don't pick something that's in your main topic area. So I'm glad, James, that you didn't pick one around jewelry or tourism or recruitment or, or life insurance. Mm. So. So here's the runner's one here. Okay, so what you're looking at is you're looking at the headlines and you're looking for the format of the headlines. So here's one about beginners. Learn to love hills really. So this is one about this is one about beginners. Here's one about double your fun. Here's one about best tips ever. Uh, eight step, eight steps to if, this was, if this was a man's one, there'd be one about abs. Rock hard abs. <laughs> Men's yeah, health absolutely. every edition. Rock hard abs. Every edition. Exactly. And I buy You're it right. every time, and I still don't have rock hard abs. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, that makes two of us. <laughs> but that's that is one of the things you find that the, those headlines get used over and over again, and they get used over and over again because they work. Okay, so let's take take one here. So if you get something like eight steps, uh, I think you should simplify it to say let's say three steps. Mm. Okay, so let's make up one, James. So let's do okay. the three steps one. On, we'll online steps jewelry, one, eight steps to picking a perfect engagement present? Exactly what it's going to say. Engagement ring? Perfect, in fact, I was going to say engagement ring. Perfect yeah. engagement ring. How's that? Yeah. But I'm going to make it easy and we'll make it three steps to picking the perfect oh, engagement ring. Okay. Okay. Um, and it can be like three, five, eight. okay. That's not a problem. But I like we'll seven with three. Antil. For business advice, I like seven. And the reason yeah. why I like seven is you can say five things that you do well and two things not to do. 
or four things to do and three things not to do. That's when we're running stories on, on Antil, seven ways to uh, master content marketing. And then we have like four or five things that are really smart and two or three things that are really dumb. It's, it's also easier to write that way often. So I guess if you do three, you can do two smart things and one dumb thing. But readers love the dumb things. They love not to. They love knowing what not to do. Yeah. Look. I'm... <laughs> Thank so you, Anna Duke Carvalho. She said, "I should send my I boyfriend gonna... these three steps to pick the best engagement ring." Thank you, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we might actually come up with something that was unexpected as a result of this. Mm. Maybe that. That's right. Our first undie empire. So engagement. look, uh, one of the things I like about what you just said, James, is that. Yeah. I reckon five is about the maximum, but what you've said is perfect because what you're actually saying is here are five uh, plus another two not to do, so two things, two mistakes to avoid if you like, or four and three. So I reckon for a piece of content, the, the problem with having too many steps, um, and in fact I've seen some magazine covers where they say things like 233 tips for something, and you think, well, how much value am I going to get really in each one of those tips? So if you're going to run a webinar, for example, you wouldn't say the 17 things you need to know. But you might say the seven, or preferably the five, because people know they're going to get valuable content in that one-hour webinar. So if you if you have too many things, people it, it dilutes your message because people think how much how, how much am I really going to get there? So look, I like that idea. So let's make it let's make it. Do you want to make it seven? We don't actually have to create the no. content. So I'm sorry for Anna. We won't actually come up with the seven. But all right, uh, let's let's do another one, James. Let's pick another one from here. What about? Um. So let's. As you said, you beginners can't. learn to love insurance. Really? <laughs> yeah. Would that work? Yeah. Yep, perfect. And no. I was going to choose the past power one. <laughs> okay, but the nice thing about that is that it's a provocative title. So people go, okay, I'm never going to love insurance, but let's see if we can. Okay, but even the past power, um, what if we say, a healthier, so we won't take pasta power, but we'll take a healthier twist on your favorite carb. We'll have something like a, a new twist on your favorite holiday destination. Mm. Or even just on your favorite holiday. Okay, so things that you can do to spice up your holiday. So that's what we're looking for. Mm. Okay, that's enough. That's enough for us to work with. Yeah. So let's jump back now. We've, we've got we've got a few titles that we can use. Sarah is asked, should you be aiming to address a customer need in your headline? And I think that that's very good if you can. Uh, if it is a headache, if you can bring that into it. Um, so, you know, if it is recruitment or life insurance, you know, recruitment. Why is it this other person's getting paid twice as much as you? Uh, those sorts of things. Uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Headaches are good. Exactly, and you would. Um, and that's why I said earlier that the really important thing is to be an authority in solving your customer's problems. So that means, A, you actually know what your, who your customers are, you know what problems they've got, and that you're an authority in solving them. Okay, which is, we, we should take for granted as, as business owners, that is, that's the, that's the price of entry. But we know our customers, we know what problems they've got, and we know how to solve them. Now, let's turn that into some compelling content online. So it's a really good question, Sarah, thanks. Okay, then the next thing is to pick a structure for your content. So we're going to create, and you might think of this as writing an article, although it doesn't have to be, but pick a structure for, for crafting the content. And like I said at the start, I want to make this really hard to, so let's do one of these. So let me show you some structures. So one simple structure is past, present, future. Here's how things used to be, here's how they are now, here's what I recommend you do. Let me, I'll go through a few structures here and then we'll pick some of them, James, for, for the three articles of the three titles that we've got. Here's another one which is really, it, it can be quite compelling for almost any, for almost any piece of content. Uh, and what you do is you start with, start with why and you go around this circle. This is called the format system and it's based on learning styles that, uh, from some research by Bernice McCarthy. But it says, why should you listen to this or why should you read this? What is it about? How do you put it in action? And what's the next step? Okay, so it's so why, what, how, and what next? Another structure that works really well is what I call the traffic light system, which is to say, here's what you should start doing, here's what you should keep doing, and here's what you should stop doing. Okay, or, the, or in whatever order works best for your content. 
here's another one which is really good when you're solving when you're solving problems we say here's a problem here's the reason for the problem here's how much it's costing you which is the effect and then by the way here's a solution that that you should use to solve the problem um, and the last one is which is really good is just if you if you have nothing else just make up a list and so if you've got seven steps that could be all it is so, in fact, we've got one, James, which is seven steps to picking the perfect engagement ring. Mm. So that one, that makes sense for it to be a for, for it to be a list. Okay, so that one would be this list. And I just have to have a shout out for Anne Willisford, who's been talking quite a bit on the questions, and she, her area is wool products, and she came up with the headline: "Wool power: a new twist on an old fibre." Boomcha. Sorry, I don't interrupt. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, just <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. That's great. And sometimes there's humorous headlines because they catch you off guard and they make you think twice. That, that's perfect. I love that one. I love that one. Thanks, Sam, for sharing. Okay, so let's look at the one about learning to love insurance. So let's pick this one at random. So let's say we're going to do past, present, and future. Okay, so learn to love insurance really could be like insurance has always been. We're talking about life insurance here, by the way. So let's make it learn to love life insurance. So insur life insurance has always been about looking after your family and your creating legacy and making sure that your loved ones are looked after when you're gone. Um, but do you know that life insurance has changed? So now life insurance means a lot of things. It, it doesn't only have to be for something that happens after you die, but you know your life insurance policy can give you income protection, it can give you security for your family now, you can use it for, I don't know, like uh, finance, for uh, buying property, whatever it is. So here's a, so here's the future of life insurance. So here's what it should be. Here's where life insurance is heading now, now and in the future, and that's why you should be that's why you should be considering life insurance. You just reminded me okay, of so a great example, example Gian. In the past, yeah, Google would look at meta tags and keywords. At the moment, they're looking for organisations that that have authority and can produce credible content. The future is mastering content marketing so that you can be found by your customers and become an authority on Google. Good example. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yep. Really good example. So let me take the same topic now that you brought that one up, James. So let me do that one around this traffic light system. Okay. So you could say, so if we were doing the Google example as well, so we should say, um, stop obsessing about, the, about everything being happening to be on your website. Continue doing SEO because that is important, but also start pushing content out to other places on the internet as well. Okay, so that's an example of where you apply mm. that to the traffic light system. Uh, let's take the other one, uh, which is a new twist on your favorite holiday. Because what's one we haven't done? We haven't done this why, what, how, and what next. So let's do that one. So a new twist on your favorite holiday. So we could talk about how the how you you're finding that you keep going back to the same place over and over again, and that's fine. But you're getting a bit bored of it. So why should you listen? So why should you read this? Because you can actually save money and time by going to places that are familiar but adding twists to them. So what are the things that you can do? And someone who's in the tourism area can talk about three simple things that you could do. Um, how do you do it? So this is if you want to elaborate on the process. And what next is maybe as simple as book your next holiday. Mm. Okay. Um, call does anyone, to uh, let's just, yeah, exactly. So all of this should end up with a call to action. Uh, does anyone, uh, do you want to just check in with anyone, James, whether they want me to do another couple of examples? I'm happy to do that. No, I think it's, uh, I'll tell you what, let's do one for, there's an online t-shirt business that's specializing in cycling themes. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just think we could perhaps look at something like that. Um, that's Simon Jones. The first thing I'll probably say for an online t-shirt business with cycling themes is identify what are the, either the passions or the headaches of the people who are going to buy your t-shirt, not everyone. Mm -hmm. So if they're cyclists, maybe there's something to do with safety or something like that. Um, five ways to not get sideswiped when you're in your car, when you're on your bike, or um, or pl uh, play on words, something to do with like, you know, here are some t-shirt yep. designs that will make sure that you get noticed and not sideswiped by an opening car door. <laughs> uh, the new twist works really well as well. I think mm. that, one, that one works. And this is the thing that not every headline that you pick will be ideal for you. And so because we've picked a, we just think this as an example, so it's, it's going to be imperfect. Uh, but what I do now when I look at article titles is I just go to magazines.com or find some old magazines and look at 
headlines that I can use. And not all of them are going to work, but some of them will. And as, who was it? Was it Anna who said that we should be making sure that we address problems and pain points as well? So, and I think that's a key as well. Mm. What did you just say, James? Is it passions well, or uh, passion, Passions and headaches. That's right. But I'll tell you what, yes. while you're talking, Simon, the lucky fella here, a lot of people have been giving him headline suggestions, such as, don't, this is from Vicky Rabe or Rabe, don't get T-boned, get this T-shirt. <laughs> David Siddle has got one less car T-shirts, Paul Callanan T-shirts for all weather, and Paul's also given us cyclic cycling T-shirts. So pretty good, you know. Yeah, stand Fantastic. out, don't get knocked yeah, out. Thank you, Laura. Good. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. That's really, really good. So obviously there's some very creative people in the Antil network, which doesn't surprise me. Um, fantastic. It's really good stuff. Uh, the other thing I want to say about this is that you can take, and as you've just done there, as you've just explained with Simon, you can, you can take one idea and create multiple pieces of content from it because all you've got to do is have a different headline to it and the, the words in there may be roughly the same uh, and people don't feel cheated by it. They don't think, oh, it's just got one idea and it's just producing the same stuff over and over again or I've read that from her before. People actually do like receiving content in different structures and as we're about to see, in different formats as well. Seth Godin's made a career of it. Same <laughs> stuff again and again but in new ways and it's great it, every time. It does. Exactly, and it, is, and it is. And this is one of the one of the problems that I get. Or people are reluctant. They go, oh, "I've just got to keep coming up with the new stuff every time, and uh, new ideas every time." You don't need new ideas, but you may ha you may have multiple ways of expressing the same idea. And for some people, they want it in a certain way, and for others, they want it in a different way. And it doesn't have to only match what you think. We get bored of our stuff a lot a lot earlier than most of our market does. Mm. Okay, so let's continue. So, and I did want to spend a bit of time on this because this was, as, as you said, James, this was actually the number one thing. It's where, how do I get the content? Mm. And this is how you get the content. So now you've got the, the content. We haven't converted it in, into any format yet, but we've got the content. Okay, so the next bit is how you then take that content and, and spin it into multiple formats. Um, and as I said, people do care about getting your content in different formats. Uh, and just because you delivering the same content in multiple formats doesn't mean that people are going to get upset with you or bored with you. They will get it in different ways. So, and I, I just want to make this point here that we're talking about content where you can publish it in different places and I, I alluded to this earlier that it's not just about your website anymore. If you think about your whole online presence as being like the solar system, your website, which is the sun, is in the middle and then around that are two circles of planets. The first one is where you do your content creation and content publishing. So a lot of it's in these, say, your email newsletter, your blog, you might write ebooks or special reports, you might publish YouTube videos, you might record it uh, as audio and publish an audio podcast or a video podcast, you might create slideshows. And then around that is what typically people think of as social media. So things like, obviously, Facebook, LinkedIn, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, and other online communities that you're a part of. So when you create your content, don't only think of putting it on your website, although that is important, but create content that can be used in other places as well. And in particular, I think these innermost planets are the places where you're going to first of all publish your content, and the outermost places are where you then advertise it or promote it or amplify it. Mm. Um, actually, we'll talk later when we talk about the gift, James, because there's something that will help you build your online reputation in these outer planets, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Um, because it's not really, I don't want to talk about the using social media today, it's really about creating the content first and then you can use social media to then amplify it. Well, when I talk about social media, the whole purpose of social media in my view is to empower your target market to do your marketing for you. And another word for that is to make what you do shareable. But you can't be shareable unless you've got something to share. And that's what we're talking about today, creating content that exactly. other people can share for us. Exactly right, exactly right. So what I want to do is I want to give you a system. I want to give you a system where when you've got one piece of content, here's how you spin it into five different ways so that you can create multiple pieces of content from the same, from the one idea. Okay, and these things, these words on the screen won't make much sense to you now uh, at the moment, but we'll, we'll look at them. So the five things that people do when they consume content. So let's jump into this. So people prefer certain, first of all, people prefer certain formats. So some people like to see, some people like to hear, some people like to read, some people like to do. 
So some of these are pretty obvious. So the C people like video and slideshows. They like attending webinars rather than just teleseminars because they can see stuff. They like watching screen capture videos. They like photographs and infographics. Uh, the hear people like MP3 audios, uh, whether they're just individually or on podcasts. They like teleseminars. They like listening to interviews. And uh, some of the content you create might be music as well. Uh, the read stuff, that's uh, things like articles and blog posts and so on, ebooks and white papers. Uh, and some people like stuff that you like to get their hands dirty and do stuff. So they like workbooks and quizzes and surveys and mm. iPhone apps and things like that. Uh, actually, James, let's do the second poll here because I'd like to know what are your preferred formats. Uh, for me, for example, I like to read and I like to listen, to hear. Uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of uh, C stuff, so I hate watching video because I just never get the time to do it. Um, and I think if we've set this up, I can't quite see this here, but I think you can answer more than one. C, it says we've got four. We've got C, watch, hear, listen, read, or do. And I will click one of those boxes. Which one is the way, the way that you prefer to prefer to consume information? And I would be fascinated, considering that the uh, majority of people on today have, uh, are, are anthill readers. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very curious because it could well influence the way that we uh, create and disseminate our own content. Absolutely. Read is 59% closely followed by see and watch. Isn't that interesting at 56%? Hear and listen comes in third at 44%. And do is uh, thirty-one percent. I don't know. I think you might have been able no, to I... tick, tick more than one box here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that adds up, yeah, that's right. It's up to about one hundred and eighty, but uh, yeah. percent. But it looks like uh, read is the number one preferred option, followed by see and watch, which wouldn't surprise me mm -hmm. because Antil is by and large uh, uh, its words. And then here we are. We're on a we're on a webinar, which is see and watch. Absolutely. Okay, great. Fantastic. Thank you everyone for taking part in that. Um, and the point is that you've got to create content that matches not just your own style, but what your what your market wants as well. So that's the first thing. We'll park that for the moment and we'll come back to that we'll come back to that later. The other thing is that some people like live events and some people like replay events. So some people like uh, recordings uh, and some people really like the fact that they're here live and they can they can interact. The third thing is that people learn stuff at different depths. So your material, your content can be pre presented at different levels of depth. So a perfect example is a book. A book is very much a detailed product. So if you've written a book or an ebook, but it's a detailed ebook, then it is very much a detailed product, which is great for some people. That's exactly what they want. Others much prefer a sample. So you can take, say, a chapter of a book, and that might be a great piece of content because it might be a special report or an ebook. And there are other people who want, again, smaller than the detail, but they just want an overview. Uh, my friend Jeff McDonald in Victoria, in Melbourne, he, do, he has this fantastic service called Book Wrapper at bookwrapper.com, which is like business book reviews, but on steroids. So he does them not just as plain text, but he has lots of diagrams and models and takes a, takes a business book apart, uh, but creates a nice, easy summary that you can read in 15 minutes, get the, great, get the main ideas from the book. And then if you want to, you can then go out and buy the book yourself if you're, if you're interested. You don't know this, one. Gihan, but uh, we also have a, have a relationship with uh, with Jeff. And if you go to the bottom right hand corner of the Antil homepage, we actually syndicate his book wrap of books. If anyone ever wants one. Oh, brilliant! Mm. I would highly, highly recommend it. And uh, he's got a subscription service, and I've signed up to it because it's just it's just great. Like you get mm. like a book a month, and the best and the most current business books that are out there. So I'd highly recommend it. Most uh, So the next one is people learn sometimes by themselves, but sometimes they learn with others as well. So they can learn as a group, they can learn as a team, or they can learn as a crowd. So today's webinar is very much a crowd because there's hundreds of people on it. But some of the webinars I run are for small groups and the interaction there is quite different because we have more, we have microphones open, we have lots more conversation among the group. And sometimes you do work with teams as well where they're together as a group, but they're actually acting as a team rather than individuals on a, on a webinar on in some other form of content. Um, and the last one is people learn at different times. So you can deliver your content simply as a one-off piece, like a like an ebook or a webinar, or there are three other ways you could do it. So you could have a calendar, a calendar delivery, which means that on certain dates you turn up. It's like that the Andy Empire web webinar series is exactly that. You turn up on certain days and here's the event. Or you can have a whole bunch of them available on the website, so on demand. 
so people can jump in and just get the recordings at any time they want to. Or there's a rolling style, which is uh, the sort of things like online courses or, or sequential autoresponders, where if I sign up to this, uh, I'll start getting uh, item number one the day I sign up. And if you sign up next month, James, you'll start getting item number one at the day you sign up, rather than it just being based on the calendar date. Those are personally okay, my so favourite, and we'll ex I'll explain why in question time. Actually, there's your favourite in... Okay, no, I'll move back to question time then. <laughs> um, so, okay, and James, the other James is giving us an uh, inkling about time, which is fine, we're going okay with time. So if I put it all together, then there's these five different ways that you can spin your content into different formats. So let's, and we're going to do a couple of examples. Uh, so we'll come back to that picture. But if you put them all together, there's 384 different combinations that you could create from one piece of content based around how you spin it that way. Now, not all of those are actually going to work for you. Okay, so some of them will and some of them won't, and some of them just don't fit well together. But let's do a couple of examples, James, and I'll ask you to just jump in and, and help me out here as well. Uh, so first of all, just explain what that model looks like. So the first one, let's take a promotional webinar, which is exactly what we're doing now, and explain the, the sort of highlighted. So obviously this is something that people see. It's live. It's pretty detailed. We're doing it for a crowd, and it's a one-off event. Okay, so James, if we let's, let's actually pick one example from the articles that we created earlier. So we could do a webinar on seven steps to picking the perfect engagement ring. Perfect. And so again, this could be something that's, that's run on a particular date. Uh, you get as many people as you want, uh, as you can to it. Uh, you go through the seven steps in detail. Um, it's a live event, and obviously they, they, they're watching it because of the webinar. Uh, let me do a couple more examples, and then we'll jump in and actually do some, uh, pick some more, James. So another example, this is the easiest one for many people to do, is an article. And I picked this one because almost everything's the exact opposite of what we, what we just covered. So an article is obviously something that they read. It's, uh, it's not live, so you, it's not like you turn up live and hear, hear the author reading out their article. It's a replay product. It's a little sample, usually, because it's not very long. It's one-to-one, -one and it's a one-off thing. Okay, but if I just made one slight variation to that, and I said, well, okay, I can do one article as a one-off, but why don't I publish an email newsletter, and then all the other things are still the same, so it's still something you read, it's still replay, it's still sample, it's still one-on-one, -on -one, but now it becomes calendar events, because you just publish your articles over and over again. And I recommend that this is one of the things you do. It's one of the I'm amazed at how many people have got, say, articles on their website or articles in their blog, but they're not also, also republishing to their email newsletter. Mm. Okay, or well, let me give you another example here. What you could do is take one of those, you could take that article, and let's say you've written seven articles, and each of them is a sample product. What if you converted that to detail by just combining them and creating an ebook or special report out of it? And then, again, I'm amazed at how few people are doing that. I keep trying to explain content. to people that a, I, that a white paper or an ebook is actually just a Word document saved as a PDF made to look pretty. It's, uh, it's not uh, so complex. Yes. It's not. It's not. And it doesn't have to be. And that's really, what I, that's really the big point I want to make here, that once you've got your ideas, converting it into different formats is really easy. And uh, even though I've got this fancy model around it, I've got the fancy model because I want to show people a system because they think it's harder than it really is. You're getting a little bit quiet on me, Gain. Just, uh, just worried about the, the mic. Is everybody else hearing Gain all right? Before we hit question times? Fine. Yep, Paul has sure said it's, yep, everyone says fine, great, rock and roll, just me. All right, <laughs> moving on. Okay, so actually let's, let's do a couple of examples, James. Let's, let's go ahead with a couple of live examples, and we might even ask for people to come up with their, their own if we, if we get time for it. But, um, and I'd, I'd love people to ask questions as we go here as well, so we don't have to wait till the end. So look, I think with that model, there are two things you could do. So one is roll the dice and pick some random combination of those five and think, okay, what, what content can I create that's using these five parameters? The second thing you can do is take a piece of content you've already got and then mold it like a piece of clay and convert it into a different format. So let's do some examples. Let's, let's roll the dice first, James. So this is actually putting you on the spot because we certainly haven't prepared this. and uh, It's actually putting me on the spot as well. Uh, why don't you, James, mm -hmm. um, pick one of these channels 
see, hear, read, or do. Just pick one at random. See, hear, read, or do. Um, uh, here. Yep. Okay, so we'll pick here. Uh, do you want a live or a replay? How about a live one that we can then save for people to replay later? Good, so we'll go with live first. Do you want an overview, sample, or detail? I think detail, maybe like a podcast. Yep, good. Uh, and then is this going to be, so let's actually go with podcast, so we'll go with one-to-one, -one. I'll, help, I'll help you out with that one. And then do you want it as a one-off, rolling, demand, or calendar? Uh, someone has asked, uh, I think it was Sarah, asked the difference between rolling and a calendar. A calendar is like okay. Antil's beer o'clock email, goes out every Friday at 4.15 or 4.30 and it's a weekly scheduled thing. Some people have a monthly email and it's different every week. A rolling is an example like someone will sign up for a seven part email series and they will get it one week after the day that they signed up. Even if you know, Gian signs up in January and I sign up in July, we'll each get that series one week after when we sign up and then one week and then one week and then one week. In this instance, for my example, I think I'm going to make it a one-off. One-off, okay. Okay, great. So we're going to have something which is here. And I know a couple of people have said there's a bit of a problem with my audio it keeps jumping in and out, so apologies for that, but uh, I hope it's going to be okay. So we've got here, live, detail, one-to-one, -one, and one-off. Actually, I'm going to change okay, one so off to calendar. Else. Change one off to calendar. calendar. Sorry. Yeah. All right. All right. I think that gives us a podcast. Yes. I think that gives us a podcast. Except that it's live, so it's not a podcast because podcasts are generally replayed. So I think what we've got here is a teleseminar series. Oh, okay. I get that. Okay, so let's say, James, if I'm I'm creating one for you that is going to be teleseminars, so not webinars, which is like webinars are fantastic, but they require more preparation because people have to do slides. Let's do an interview series where uh, in the recruitment industry, you're going to, so the, the person who's running the recruitment business is going to interview other experts who are in recruitment and they're going to run a monthly uh, teleseminar series. So you can turn up, you can listen to the interview, you can ask questions live. Right. Okay, in fact, that one turns into a group or a team, so it's not even one-to-one. -one. Mm. But now, as you said, James, the, the beauty of this is we can now change it. So we can say that you also record it, and now the recordings are available as well. Uh, and who asked about the difference between calendar and rolling? Do you remember? I can't remember. I think it was Sarah. Okay, so if we can, we can also make that rolling where you say, okay, now if you go to the website, so you do say three of them, and then you say it's also available as, an, um, as a rolling, like an online course. So you've got the, the 12 Secrets of Recruitment, and you go to the website and you subscribe to it, and every month uh, it'll email you a link to an MP3 file that you can download because you've recorded it. That's great. The, the other thing you can do is, of course, you get the recordings transcribed, and now you've got something which is read as well. So you've got, uh, you can make the transcripts available and from the transcripts there's probably half a dozen articles in each one of those detailed interviews. Because you've done a detailed product, it's very easy to, there's a lot of detail in there. You can go through the transcript and pick out bits. You can even pick out bits from the audio and I've done this, we've done a one hour interview, but this little 10 minute segment is perfect for publishing as a separate bit. So you can do a sample based on that as well. Uh, on demand, so let's, let's cover up as many of these as we can. So you can also stick them on the website and say when you subscribe to our website, which is free by the way, then you get access to the Ant Hill Treasure Vault, which has uh, all the, all the um, interviews in the series. Very smart. Um, you, can do, you can do quizzes, for example, around that. So you can do a do around that, um, where you take the you take the material that the presenters have created and create a short quiz around it. Uh, and in fact, you can even create visual stuff from it. So the way I would do this, because we didn't do this, because we started off with, a, with an audio interview, is you can create a slideshow. So, so create some PowerPoint slides that go along with each interview, attach them to the audio, and publish them to a place like SlideShare. Okay, so we've probably got a dozen products there just from the one thing. Great. Um, Is there anything you want to add there, James? I'll tell, no, no. I've got a couple of questions which I'm definitely going to get back to. So do hang on, yeah. uh, Julianne and some other people. 
Um, and uh, we'll just keep rolling with the slides so we can quickly get to question to Q and A. How many? Are we almost? Which is coming up. Rock and roll. Yeah, we're, in fact, that's that's really what I want to do, James. I'd really want to show you this model and show you how you can use it. So pretty much done that. So I, I do want to say, um, and this is this is a rhetorical question at this stage, which is, what are you going to create? Oops, sorry, missed the summary slide. That doesn't matter. Uh, what are you going to create next? So based on what you've got in your business, what are you going to create next? We won't ask people to type them in the question box because I do want to jump to Q and A now. So James, in fact, let's take it away. Let's jump into into what you want to say, and I'll let you lead this in terms of Q&A. Well, I'll tell you what, before we do the Q&A, because a couple of people, a bunch of people are going to want to leave at, uh, at 2 p.m. because they've got other commitments, so I would like to make an announcement before we hit the Q&A and before people leave. Uh, before you leave, there are three things that we'd love you to do, three great reasons to fill out the exit survey. So when you're leaving, you're going to be given a prompt to ask you whether you'd like to complete the exit survey, and there are three pretty good reasons for doing that. The first one is that you will get uh, the handout slides, which a lot of you have asked about, uh, and some further resources. Uh, Gian's got a, a great ebook, um, which we'll show you in a second, and there it is. And we've also got a um, five people who attended today will get the physical book uh, the physical, uh, a different book, a physical book sent to the to their door. Um, uh, jump back two slides, please, Gan. The, the second thing is uh, that you'll request that uh, you'll you'll be able to request a free trial of GoToMeeting uh, or GoToWebinar by Citrix. Now, this is really good if you want to have a dabble at creating an item of content such as a webinar, like we've done today. And it is a really, if you know how to use PowerPoint, if you know how to use to create, if you've ever stood in front of a crowd and done a presentation on a topic, you are already an authority on what you do. Why not gather some people together, record yourself doing it, and immediately you have an item of content. Um, you know, you've already started your bank. Of content, and the third reason is that uh, you'll access a special go-to subscription offer of the first uh, two months free if you sign up before the 30th of September. Plus, as well as I said before, I'm going to throw together a coupon code link so anyone who's re who's listened today can come to our event on the 21st or the 28th of September for a super cheap discount rate. I've got to think of what that coupon code is going to be. Uh, the price for that event is uh, $97, and I think we'll make it for you guys $47. How's that? Half price. Um, so, flick one forward for me, please, Gian. That's that's the ebook that you're going to get, as well as the handout notes. Jump ahead again. Uh, we'll send you a yeah, link where you can get a whole way. bunch of extra stuff from here. And jump ahead again. Yes. Yeah, so oh. And there we are, Q and A. Now the Q and A, rock and roll. One of the first questions that I come, one of the questions that kept coming up again and again, even though I tried to answer it, is what's the difference between a, a rolling uh, item and a calendar item? And if you don't and mind, again, I said that that was my favourite, and I'd just like to quickly explain why. And the reason yes. is yeah, is that we talked about um, the life cycle of the relationship with your prospect. Someone also asked whether what's better for conversions. What I like is that someone can sign up for a seven-part series on, say, for example, search engine optimization, and it doesn't matter whether they sign up in January or, or, or July, they're going to be educated over the next seven weeks uh, with information that's going to be appropriate to them and their level of knowledge. Whereas a calendar one, you're just setting up a generic one email that's going to go out to everyone, uh, say, once a month or on a Friday. Um, that's, that's the difference between those two. The other reason why I like the rolling one is that if you're in a B2B space, it might take six months for someone to decide whether to hire you or not. So for example, if you're in the life insurance game like someone before, someone could sign up for that series, maybe get an email once a month for the next six months, but it might be in months five, month five when they're ready to actually buy from you, which is the other reason why I like that so much. If you got, would you like, sorry about to interrupt there, but I just wanted to explain why it was my favourite, and I use it all the time, the rolling ones, all the time. Yeah, and I love it, James, and I don't think I can add anything that will improve what you've just said. Um, and Vicky Ray wanted to know what a good tool is. Aweber, A-W-E-B-E-R, is an email tool where someone can sign up for the first part of the series, and you can set up the autoresponder is what it's called, so it can send them an email once a week, once a month, once a fortnight, five days later, two days later, what's, whatever it's going to be. Um, we had some other questions here, and I flagged them so I could get back to them. 
Someone also asked, I mentioned my beer o'clock email on a Friday and someone said, isn't Friday a really bad time for email conversions? All I can really, or content conversions, all I can really say is test and check and refine. Friday, our beer o'clock Friday is, is a sensational success. Um, just simply because it's beer o'clock and it's late on a Friday and we send some videos out that people are going to watch and learn from. Cat D asked you, Gian, doesn't it take time to build authority, months or years? Uh, yes, it does take time to do it, Kat, but um, part of it is publishing regularly. So yes, it does take time to build the authority, but uh, and you can't just do it. It's not it's not going to be an overnight success. But it's uh, and I often say like internet marketing is a process, not an event, and the secret to doing it is to be consistent with it, mm. uh, and that's why. Like if you take something like an article, but let's just take something even as simple as you write one article, you can publish it to your blog, publish it to your email newsletter a couple of weeks later, publish it on your website a few weeks later, publish it to an article directory a few weeks after that. Um, when you publish it in some of those places, you tweet it out automatically uh, so that it automatically appears in your Twitter feed and in your Facebook page. You, you are building authority one step at a time. But it, you're absolutely right, it takes time, but it doesn't have to take a lot of time, uh, a lot of effort on your part to do that. The other thing as well as what I've noticed is that it's really hard to, to guess what's going to go be really popular. And I, mm. I, with my team, I, I define them as porridge and Mars bars. Mars bars are fantastic if you can introduce a Mars bar to your audience because everybody loves them, but you get this big spike of excitement and interest in everything that you're doing like an energy level when you have a Mars bar, but the next day you fall flat, you flatline. <laughs> Whereas if you're, if you're eating porridge or producing wholesome, regular, quality, nourishing content, you build a, a degree of loyalty that's not subject to highs and lows. And every now and then you will pr produce something that's magic with an extra dollop of honey or something like that, and it does go crazy. And then suddenly your credibility does go up very fast. But most of the time, it's uh, it's just it's just being consistent with with providing good quality, thoughtful information that's of relevance to your target market. Not everyone, just the people who you want to uh, who who you want to be having as your customers and interested in what you do. Yep, that's right. And, it's, and as you say, James, it's really difficult to guess what, what's going to go viral or what's going to be popular. I'm constantly surprised by which of my newsletter articles or blog posts are the most popular. Um, they're not the ones I expected, but I just keep publishing. Um, and I don't spend a huge amount of time on it. Be because of that, I can publish a lot. And that's my market testing as well. This is probably a good lead into Simon's question. How process heavy should content marketing planning be? when it contrasts with so much advice about just get going, ready, fire, aim, as Pete Deloitte, Pete Williams from Deloitte would probably say. I, I agree with Pete wholeheartedly there. Ready, fire, aim. What do you think, Anne? Yeah, and I agree. I think, in fact, I think the system that we've talked about today that I've laid out is very much that. It's, it's actually get going. And one of the things I say is start before you're ready. Uh, because you sh I don't think we're in a time now where we can afford to just spend six months strategizing. So yes, I think it's process oriented, but and I've given I've given you process for it. But get going now. There's no reason why you can't go to magazines.com or go to go to your doctor's office and pick up a magazine and pick up an article, uh, a headline, write an article and publish it. I, I'm very much. I agree with that as well, James. I've got some great questions here. By the way, thank you, Peter, for saying this presentation is Mars bar-like. Yes, you rock, Peter. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> a couple you, of people have asked, how can they? Uh, well, it's two two sides of the same coin. Uh, Julianne uh, Rukuwai has asked, how do you make heavy, boring content exciting and usable? Joe Labou has asked, how can you find out what your audience wants? What would you say? Okay, so there's a couple of things. So if I answer Joe's question first, so one of the easiest ways to find out what your audience wants is to ask them. Okay, and that's a, that's a really common answer, uh, and I think it's still really valuable. So ask them, what, what would you most like to know? What are your biggest problems? What are the things that keep you up at night? So I quite often do this when I'm running webinars myself for my membership site for my members. I say, look, what do you most want to know about this topic? Yeah. Uh, and that helps me helps me uh, tailor the content to be uh, and structure it so it actually answers their questions. And that also answers that first question, so how you make boring content interesting, is make sure that you pick the pointy end, which is a bit, which is where they've got pains or passions. I think you use the phrase passions or headaches, James. Mm. And if you can make sure that each piece of content uh, touches a passion 
of your of your reader or consumer or a headache, then even boring content can be interesting. And the funny thing is, is that sometimes the passion or the headache doesn't have to be all about what you do or what you're selling. It just has to be something that excites them. And so, uh, so for example, someone's target market might be uh, website developers, but a headache among all website developers is often cash flow. So then you do something on cash flow issues for website developers. They're passionate about website development, their headaches are, are cash flow. But your business might be helping website developers uh, in, in a range of different ways. Uh, Carl Stoltz has answered those two questions quite well. Uh, he says, ready, fire, aim, then learn. There needs to be some system. And that's exactly right because when you're out there and you're doing stuff, if you're seeding content regularly, sooner or later you get to see what what headlines are resonating. And I cannot think of a more apt example than the topic, than the headline of this series, how to build a glo global empire in your underpants. The reason why we've been running with this headline, or that's the name of our series, our Under Empire series for almost two years now, is the reason why is that someone tweeted it, how to run a global empire in your underpants. And it retweeted, it re retweeted like wildfire. So we could have done a series on how to master new technologies to communicate better with your audience and build a business, you know, however. But however, that headline that I'm not even sure we came up with, it retweeted like crazy. We ready, fire, we aimed, and then we learned that that was popular. And that's what we've relied on since our audience told us. And I think you're a master at this, James. And I love the way that you've promoted this particular webinar uh, to the Antil network, because it's, it's exactly along those lines. It's like picking stuff that you know is going to hit hot buttons. Yeah, um, um, Laura Gaskell's asked, we use newsletters to communicate with current clients. How could we get this out to a wider audience? So Laura's already creating content um, and wants to know how to get it out to a, a, a wider audience. Can I just make one suggestion? Ask your audience to share it. Ask your audience to share it. Um, this webinar had 730 odd registrations. One of the reasons that we asked people who are participating to tell their friends, and they did. Yeah, and I'd also add, Laura, if you're not already doing this, uh, think about this. Take the articles from your newsletter and use them to republish in other places. So make sure you publish them on your blog, your website, uh, article directories. So there's a site called easynarticles.com where you can publish articles and other people can take them and share them. Uh, but just getting your content out in as many places as possible and reusing the material you've already got can also help bring you new, new subscribers in an indirect way. We're uh, ten minutes over time, so we'll, we'll take uh, we'll take one more uh, one more question. I think it's a good one to end on. And by the way, thank you to all those people who have just been uh, giving us shout outs. Again, can't see it, but there's plenty of people saying, uh, "Oh, mercy, Bakoop, Mona, me, Tina Hughes." A whole bunch of people who have to leave, but they're giving you shout outs on the way out. There are lots of lots of excitement. Fantastic, thank you from from Laura Gaskell. But there's the one question that I'd like to finish on. Is uh, if someone just asked a very simple question, Jay Forster, are there any practical exercises or workflow examples that we can use to break down our knowledge to start content generation? Can we finish on that answer, Guillaume? Yeah, look, that's interesting. So, uh, look, one of the things that you can do is, uh, and this is a bit of a gratuitous plug, but it's the Fast Flat and Free book. So 25 people are going to get a copy of the book. So that's great for those 25 people. But for those, for anyone, you can go to fastflatandfree.com and you can download the chapter, which is about content creation. You don't even have to give me an email address. You just go and download it. Just it's a PDF that you can download off the website. So fastflatandfree.com um, takes you through a step-by-step -step process to doing things like writing articles and then spinning it into multiple formats. So it's a little bit more... Um, yeah, I guess workflow oriented to, to help you do that. I, I'm not sure that that answers the com question completely because part of it is actually identifying your content, but I reckon that's a good start. I'll tell you what, I, I have to say, someone called Gina LaFaro just popped up. I bought the digital version of your book yesterday. Excellent. So there's a great, a great endorsement of your book just there. Thank that's you, obviously Gina. a good way to start. The other way that I might just say is go to a coffee shop with a notepad and a pen, have the stiffest macchiato short Mac that you can have and write down the passions and headaches of your target audience. Once again, not what you do, not even how you do it, but the passions and headaches of your target audience. And write 
10 on a piece on a notepad or a piece of paper and you'll be surprised at where that will take you that will take you in all sorts of different directions so on that Thank note, you. I would like to thank Gian so much. Uh, that's just been tremendous. Uh, such a such a, a great response to today's uh, today's webinar. So many people signing up. It's obviously a, a real passion area, and so so much po you know great feedback about your style of speaking, Gian. You didn't get to see it, but also just the amount of uh, interaction suggests to me that uh, there was definitely some awesome information sharing going on. So thank you, Gian. And let's give him a little virtual round of applause, everyone who's still on the line. The 200 of you still on line. Well done. Just give us a little clap yeah, or a woot so. or a yay. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Woo. Look at them all. Karen, Claudia, Janine, Melina, Felicity, Jonathan, Avril. It's like looking through the magic window on that children's show from years ago. So everybody else, before you leave, don't forget, don't forget to complete the exit survey. One, you get to tell us what you liked, what you didn't like. It makes our webinar so much better. You're going to get the handouts. You're going to get the free stuff. You're going to get the discount code from me to conquer the web. You're going to get a, a, a free trial of Citrix Go-To webinar and go to a meeting which I seriously recommend if you've ever done a PowerPoint presentation in your life to an audience of people, have a try. Create your first webinar. Go do it. Um, be like Ani and do it. So until next time, thank you very much. Thanks for your attention and signing off.